that you have that uncommon impact? Are there secrets you would love to share with us that you observed ah, has really, really, really helped? Uh, the top two or three of them, sir. Well, let me also quickly say that um, you can make your impact within a ministry if that is where God wants you to be. Impact is not limited to pioneering a ministry. Now, back to the Old Testament. Aaron was impactful under Moses. Study Exodus very well. Joseph was a successful servant in the house of Potiphar. You can make impact. It's just that a lot of us want visible in court. We want visibility. We want to be seen as the head. But you see, being the head is not the same as being a leader. You can lead from bottom. You can lead in the middle. You can be a cleaner and a leader. Don't forget what we shared a little while ago on attitudes. These are attitudes. These are attitudes. Leadership is an attitude. It's not a position. So you must appreciate uh, that, I mean, there are people who share testimonies of my, my privileged impact on their lives. But I'm not number one or the head of this ministry, the head ministry which I am. So, let each man stand in the place where God has put him and be making his impact. If you're a cell leader, you can make your impact among cell members. I was once Believers Foundation teacher's class and I know three people that I taught that became pastors. Consistently. So impact is not about position of visibility. Impact is about relevance of touching lives. Every one of us can touch lives irrespective of the position where you are. Another important thing is, you see, many of us, we, uh, we have low esteem. You just think, oh, nobody knows me here. No, it's you who think so that nobody knows you. There are people God sent you to, wherever you are, and those ones will locate you. They will locate you. They will find you out wherever you are. So putting these few things together, I believe... Um, Sir, uh, somebody is asking about stagnation. Stagnation, when as a minister, you're laboring, things were moving on, and then suddenly you notice a, a kind of lull, uh, like a stag stagnant, stagnancy. How do you break out of it when you feel you've done so much? Well, get back to some of the things we have taught. Yes. Um, the first thing is a sense of appreciation. Mm. Mm. This thing has done so much to my life. Appreciation. Now, the children of Israel wanted bread. They wanted food. And the first time God sent bread to them, you know what they said? Manna. Manna means, what is this? God gave them bread. They called it what? manna. What is this? Mm -hmm. And God said, that is it. <laughs> so for 40 years, the menu did not change. That is it. That is it. <laughs> That's what you'll be eating. <laughs> if you are pastor of a church, for instance, you have a church of 60 people. And you say, what is, what is this? <laughs> that is it. That is it. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Man, the day our church became 32 in number, I was so excited. I called all the members with snap photograph. What? 32 people? Me alone? Who born me? When we were 60, jubilation. 
will fill the whole sitting room. Thanking God. Attitude of gratitude is what changes altitude. Now, where you have reached, are you the one who brought yourself there? No. No. And you call it stagnation. Me, I've never seen stagnation in my life before. I've never seen. Wow. I've never seen stagnation before. I've, and I mean, I've never seen it. You had me said, when church uh, moved from 15, I mean, from 18 to 15, yeah, we didn't drop. <laughs> we didn't reduce. Are you following me? So, joyfulness. Excitement. How many pastors stand up on Sunday and say, Father, thank you for this service today. Thank you for this, you wonderful people. Because the way you even address the people, you look at them, you look. God brought 30 people to church, went to 30 different homes and brought 30 people. Is he your messenger? And you say, we are not many in the church today. We are not many in the church today. One way to break stagnation is appreciation. Hey. Although the fig tree does not blow down, there will be no fruit in the vine. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. Hallelujah. Be a rejoicing pastor. Be an excited. Now, you see, like I said, the people are watching you. They say, Pastor, I'm not there happy today. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Make no go greet them after this service. Oh. <laughs> Otherwise, anointing go turn to annoyance. Father, we thank you for this beautiful service. Come on, everybody, let's lift up our hands and give thanks to God for bringing us here today. Father, what a day, what a joy, what a glory, what a present. Look at how many people that are getting saved in this church. How many people? You are talking of four people that got saved. Come on, church, give thanks to God. There is joy in heaven over every soul that is saved. Not one, not two, not three, not ten today. He said, joy over one. And he now brought 20. Uh, then extreme joy. Uh, so go back to that thing you call stagnation. Father, thank I give you glory. Hallelujah. I give you thanks. I give you glory. I give you thanks. That is number one. And number two. And constantly the number of what you must be doing. You know why? With joy, you shall draw wares from the world. So God will be revealing things to you. He said, in his presence there is fullness of joy and thou shalt show me the path of life. Ingratitude blinds people. It will not let you see the next thing to do. So as you are thanking him, he gives you a word. As you are thanking him, he shows you a step to take. And then you start, you connect to move forward. Stagnation is broken in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Please put your hands together for Jesus. <laughs> so we, we noticed that even among the disciples, um, there was a jostling for power. I mean, the mother of about two of them even came to try to tell Jesus yeah. uh, right or left. So we, uh, ex people experience like jealousy in in a, in a system. And sir, for the many decades you have been serving, sir, I, I, I want to believe such might have come up from maybe colleagues, uh, fellows, uh, associates. How are you able to maneuver that, handle that without allowing it hinder you, sir? Well, please note, you cannot take another man's place and another man cannot take your place. Everybody has his place. There's no need struggling for another person's place. So, if you are placed here, stay there. If you are placed here, stay there. Because if you don't like here and you go there, it won't fit you. It will expose you. That's why some people, they want a position that they are not prepared for. So they get there and they get exposed. Their weaknesses shows. Grace comes with every position. 
And that grace will cover your error when you are there and color your effort. But if you go there by yourself, if you steal another man's position, you will soon be exposed. And so Jesus told those two sons and their mother. He said, can you drink of the cup that I drink? They said, yes, we can drink it. So that means there's a price to pay for every lifting. So you keep paying your price. When you are due, you'll be lifted. Now, everywhere I have been placed in ministry, I serve anyone on top of me with joy, without wishing that I would take his place. I've never wished another man's place in my life. So when I'm told this is your senior pastor, I take him as my senior pastor. And I cooperate and I support fully. Now, for your satisfaction, if you know and if you can, find out anyone under whom I've worked. What was this man's attitude under you? No struggle. No struggle. No struggle. No man can take your place and you cannot take another man's place. Your place is there. Pay the price. Drink the cup. You will get there. Amen. Please put your hands together. The, the and if you have people who you think are struggling with you, love them. Love Respect them. them. Mm. You know, um, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 23-24 is one of the guiding scriptures of my life. The servant of the Lord must not strive. Must not strive. Must not. Must not struggle, must not compete, but be gentle to all. Apt to teach. Patient. Huh? Now, the following verse, verse 25. In meekness. So, remain meek. Don't try to struggle with anybody. Instructing those that oppose themselves. If God peradventure, we give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. I've seen people before who try to behave somehow. And later on, they might conduct in meekness. No reaction, no anger. Some will come back and say, sir, I just realized I was wrong. Please pardon me. And that gives you more honor. Hmm. Yeah. You know why we respect God every day? He forgives us every day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One way a leader will earn respect is to be patient with followers. Hmm. Don't be angry with followers. They are doing things at their level, the best way they know to do it. If God should mark iniquity, who shall stand? But there is forgiveness with him that men may respect him. God earns our respect because he keeps forgiving us. He keeps bearing with us. He keeps being patient with us. <sighs> if you are not a patient leader, you will destroy people. They are doing the best they know how to do. Accommodate them. Give them time. That's what Jesus did. A day came when Peter told Jesus, you are mad. <laughs> Nonsense. Jesus said, who touched me? He said, that's what we are talking about. Who can touch you when I'm here? Uh, Peter, in my view, was his chief security officer. He suspected everybody, including children. <laughs> Come on, clear off. Clear off. Jesus said, even children, Peter. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Amen. The, 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 the final one. Yes. yes. Can you speak to marriages? Um, we, 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 I see the joyful relationship with um, mommy and there must be some two or three secrets of what has helped the union, especially in our own generation where different challenges are coming up and different things are showing up. I, I believe we can learn from your experience, uh, marriage. Yes. Well, by redemption, there is no difference between male and female. We all have equal heritage by redemption. But you see, there must be flow of leadership. It's a big conflict today, especially in our generation. Like we know, 
Anything that has two heads is a monster. And what does monster does? Destroys. Now, there must be head. And I'm saying this with all sense of responsibility. I'm saying this with all sense of responsibility. If both husband and wife are in ministry, if he's husband, then wife. Because we have some situation where you have a wife in ministry mm. and the husband is supporting. We must draw a line between family relationship and ministry relationship. The supportive role of the spouse must be clear and evident. Again, the problem of superiority and inferiority plays a lot. Let no man in ministry feel superior, superior to the wife. Hmm. But continue to treat themselves as joint heirs, but clear leadership, which is simply about accepting responsibility. Now, in marriage generally, what makes a man in marriage? is accepting responsibility. Responsibility to lead, to feed, to clothe your wife. I see a lot of men fighting with their wives. You are not contributing anything to your house. She should contribute what she has, but that's not her primary duty. Mm. When the Lord made Eve, he took her and gave it to Abraham. This is your responsibility. What brings pride to man is that he is able to take care of his family. And that's why the scripture says, a man who cannot take care of his family is not worthy of being in ministry. If I have no work to do, I will go to construction site and carry concrete to feed my family, to take care of my wife. My wife is my responsibility. Without prejudice, to whatever she's earning. So, the husband must accept responsibility. And when he does, I have found that in most cases, when a man takes care of his wife, the wife will respect him. In most cases. You know, in every situation, you have exceptions. But in most cases. And when the wife is supportive to the husband, the husband can never forget her or look down at her. If anything contrary happens, then there must be some mental issues. <laughs> so, but you see, a lot of responsibility is on man. He said, husband, love your wife as Christ loves the church. So the big question I ask myself is that how does Christ love the church? How does Christ love? What's the definition of Christ loving the church? Amen. If you study it, it's a lot. Mm. Think of Peter, James, John, Thomas being the wives of Christ. A doubter was there who would not believe anything. Thomas. So I recommend to men, um, don't just be husband, be father, be brother to your wife. Don't legalize marriage. Mm. but relate in marriage. And that's what makes it grow and sweet. Um, narrowing it down to ministry. Let no spouse struggle with the husband or the wife, as the case may be, whosoever is leading.